On Nationwide this evening, a County Cork community remembers the almost 1,200 people who lost their lives in the sinking of the Lusitania, which was torpedoed by a U-boat a few miles off the old head of Kinsale during World War I. We hear of the plans by the community here to build a new museum to remember this great tragedy. It all started with the bustle of passengers getting ready for their voyage across the Atlantic from New York to Liverpool. This was the Lusitania leaving New York on May 1st, 1915. These are the last images of the Lusitania. Six days later, on a calm, foggy day, 18 kilometres off the Cork coast, Lusitania would be lying on the seabed, fatally torpedoed by a German U-boat. 1,198 passengers and crew died on that morning off the old head of Kinsale. Today, the small local community have worked hard to mark the tragedy at a museum and memorial garden based in an old Napoleonic-era watchtower overlooking the ocean. At the old head of Kinsale Museum, a new piece of art commemorates the sinking of the Lusitania. Designed to represent a calm wave like those on the day of its sinking, it names each of the passengers and crew on board, the survivors and those that drowned. You can trace the history just by walking around the, the whole panel because it starts with the New York and it's actually a replica of the skyline of New York in 1915. And you walk along and you see the torpedo attack. You go up further, then you see more names and then you see the, the burial. So it has the entire history. And then the last panel is the aftermath of uh, the Lusitania. There were songs and stories. The fact that it's low down and it sweeps across, you have to walk around, it reveals itself. And the horror of the amount of people that died reveals itself slowly. So it's kind of, it's a gentle uh, walk around it and um, it's not kind of in your face. So everything, it's, it's calm and it's peaceful and you can sit and you can reflect. You're surrounded by the ocean. So it's actually a really, really nice space from that point of view. It's calming, I think. Liam and Ethna then take us on a tour of the artwork and how they made it. One of the main tools was a pasta maker. Um, so I actually rolled to flatten the, the material. I actually, uh, I rolled, I, I put it through the pasta maker. So I, it was like making tagliatelle. Also knives, forks were used, combs were used um, in some of the areas to get the, the sky rise, to get all the different glass, the windows. So um, there was a lot of um, invention, shall we say. And uh, another thing for you adapt is to make the panels. The panels are obviously all carved down this way. So we needed to steam bend some wood, um, two metres long. And so, OK, how you do that? We don't have a steamer. So, OK, uh, what's the first steamer that comes to hand? My mother-in-law, Etna's mother, Siobhan, her steam floor cleaner. It worked, but the steam cleaner didn't survive. So then we graduated to um, an industrial wallpaper stripper. And I'm not sure if I've been forgiven by my mother-in-law yet for <laughs> breaking her uh, steam cleaner. This passenger ticket, the name on it is Patrick Sheedy. So my aunt is married to Frank Sheedy, and this is Frank Sheedy's uncle. Now, we never knew anything about him. Uh, they didn't know what happened to him he, when he went down on the ship. So it's nice to have somebody nobody knows anything about, so he's remembered as well, you know. How did he come to be on the ship? He was actually deported. Now, we don't know what he did. <laughs> it wasn't because he had something wrong with him. A lot of people, when they arrived, if they had some physical disability, they were sent back again. But he actually spent uh, a month in New York, so he must have possibly upset somebody or you know we don't we don't know what he was doing but he he never lived to tell the tale anyway you know it's nice that he's included in something like a passenger luggage ticket 
This piece here is a replica of the scissors that actually cut the ribbon to actually launch the Lusitania. But we have it in here as a symbol of their, the people's lives were cut short. And this piece here is quite a poignant little section. It's a booty um, that was given to one of the crew members that uh, pulled this woman and her baby out of the water. And he actually wrote in the, the, the bottom of at least we forget. So now the baby actually died because of the cold afterwards. But uh, that booty now is on display in, I think it's in Liverpool in the Maritime Museum. That says it all, really. It says it all about the piece, I think. And all this end up is sweeping up, up along here. This piece wouldn't have been uh, possible without the community. The community are absolutely brilliant down here. They really were enthusiastic. They got on board. We actually got to know them from, you know, personally. We visit them now if we're in the area. Um, they were just brilliant. Nothing was impossible for them. Um, they've got a mentality that, look, there's no sitting around talking. Come on, we'll just get up, we'll do it. And that's what they did. The spirit of community down here is just incredible. You know, and that's its testimony to what they've done this whole place, you know. And every sailor knows that the sea is a friend made enemy and every shipwreck soul knows what it is to live without intimacy I thought I had the captain's voice 